up to five class labels, each one with one founding loss. So for example, over here, the algorithm produces five different um, class labels with founding boxes. Some of them are correct, some of them are wrong. But still drunk, which is the target category, is correct. The class label is correct. And one of the founding boxes correctly looks like the target instances. So this is correct. However, if, for example, the algorithm gets the fact that there's a field drop in the image correctly, but does not properly localize any one instance, then that is incorrect. And if it fails to realize that there is a field drop in the image, then that is also incorrect. And so to evaluate on this task, we compute the error, which is, again, the average over uh, 100,000 images of the independent function of whether the output is correct whether the output is incorrect on So again, like I said, so this is the um, second main task in the ImageNet classification, um, in the ImageNet challenge this year. Um, again, I'm going to show the results. So this is the uh, local ImageNet localization with provided training data. So the teams will use the, um, the data that we supplied to the challenge. So the winners of this task was the uh, Visual Geometry Group of Oxford, and the runner-up was um, Google Ant, which we heard from. Um, and again, there will be an award ceremony later where we will uh, acknowledge the winners again. And then there was, of course, the uh, other track where you could also use additional training data. Um, and here, the winner was the Adobe UI UC team, and the runner up was the Shen team uh, that we heard a spot like from earlier. Um, it's actually interesting uh, to note that uh, for this task, actually, the results were higher for teams, <coughs> better for teams, which was only provided for the data. So, this is um, something interesting to note. So, there was also, um, so this year we actually did a officially have a classification challenge. So a lot of teams are talking about it, and I know a lot of people still participated in that task and cared about that metric, but it was actually not part of the official challenge. But um, sort of I call it task 2A, <laughs> classification only task. So here, um, again, so every team had to submit uh, results in the format of classification with localization, so they had to guess the class label and a bounding box for one instance. But when evaluating the classification only metric, we also considered um, the case on the bottom uh, left to be correct. So as long as they predict the right class, even if the um, localization is bad, that's still considered correct for the sake of classification only metric. And again, the error is average across the same 100,000 categories. So in this, um, According to this metric, so the winners with provided training data was Google Net, and the runner-up was the Oxford VGG team. <laughs> and um, when using additional training data, the winner was the um, CRIPAC Week Supervision Team, um, which we'll hear from later in this session, and the runner-ups were Transcription. So one of the really interesting questions to ask is, so accuracy is, get, well, error is getting very low, accuracy is high, so error is only, you know, 6% of the data. And the question is, so what is human accuracy? Can humans do better? Are humans at about 6%? Um, and so this was a very interesting question that was actually um, asked by Andre Kropati, who's a PhD student with Feifei. Um, and after the results of the uh, challenge this year, after, after we saw the results before they were even released, since he's my office mate, he saw the results, and he said, oh my god, what, what about humans? And I said, well, you know, in two weeks we're releasing an archive paper about this, and in three weeks is the image of the workshop, so if you can get it done, we'll talk about it, we'll include it. <laughs> Turns out he did. So um, all of this work is I'm entirely due to him. This is, all the credit goes to him. So, figuring out human accuracy, but the data for image and challenge is manually annotated, so shouldn't human accuracy be 100%? The current crowdsourcing annotation interface that we use basically asks what it shows the user an image for, for classification, instead of uh, uh, mechanical short for an image, it says, is this a badger? 
yes or no. So this is the current interface. And we do this with 10 workers, and we average the results across many workers, and we do verif additional verification and so on. And this is very different than showing somebody a picture and saying, OK, here's a picture. Which one of a 1,000 classes is this? And this is sort of what computers are asked to do. So Andre designed this new web-based um, annotation interface with a thousand object classes. It's actually available um, online, so you can play around with it. And basically, on the left, it shows you an image. You can pick up to five predictions, sort of move them around, move the order around. And on the right is all a thousand object classes with, um, I think he said it was like 10, I cut off a little bit here, but it, it's, I think, 10 example images per class. And so, and this results with a secret annotator one, um, who was an expert human annotator, who was um, willing to spend about one to five minutes annotating each image. I'll give you a hint, it wasn't me. Um, so he went through and annotated 1,500 images among the 100,000, obviously doing this in 100,000, it's not going to work. Um, so on this set, um, the Google Net, the, the best, um, the winning classification entry this year, their error was 6.8%, and the human classification error was 5.1%. So the human annotator one indeed achieved better accuracy than the Net by 1.7%, and this is statistically significant, if we can tell you much to it, um, zero two. So then, you know, sort of looking at this, he said, oh, we should get more annotators. And he actually assembled everybody in the lab, and we all started annotating, and it was great. Here's the results with, oh, yeah, right. So the task requires a significant amount of training for humans. And you can see this by looking at the results for annotator two, who was also one of the organizers of this challenge, who was shall remain nameless. It wasn't me, because my error was higher than 12%. Mine was, I think, like 20 because I rationally was overconfident and thought, you know, I'll label this quickly. No, no, no. Um, he labeled 158 images, and the error was actually higher. So this is a very, very challenging task for humans. So let's look at why. So here's a confusion matrix. Google net correct, Google net wrong, um, and human correct, human wrong. So of course, out of the and this is just the annotator one, the good one, the one that actually took his time and did well. Um, so on 1,300, uh, 1,352 images, they were both correct. Great. So sometimes Google Ads was wrong when the human was correct. So when does this happen? This happens when objects are very small or thin. So for example, a real. This happens with abstract representations. So for example, this is a picture of a hatchet. And a human doesn't have trouble with it, but turns out um, computers do, which, which makes sense. Um, and also an image filter, so this is kind of a weird picture of a sidewinder. Um, but basically any picture that, um, you know, on Instagram or on Flickr or whatever that the people applied a weird photo filter to, uh, the computer is going to have trouble. Of course, there are also some pictures where the human has trouble. So fine grain recognition, and I know this because, well, there's 120 dog classes. So somebody shows you a picture of a dog. You have to look through the 120 dog breeds and try to figure out which one it is. This is really hard. And birds is even worse. Birds is just about, I mean, I basically gave up when I was at a I said, I, I don't know birds. It's very, very, very hard. Um, so, um, for example, this can be, you know, a type of dog. And do you know what type it is? If you look through the 120 um, breeds, then maybe you can figure it out. Um, so the other sort of error was class, kind of class unawareness. Um, so you just you're looking at a cluttered scene, and there's many objects, and you have to know, you have to remember the thousand categories. You, either you have to read through them every time to see which ones come up, or you have to remember which ones are even available. Um, and that's very very hard. And finally, insufficient training data. This is um, may sound a little strange, but it it basically comes from. The fact that if I show you 10 examples of a breed of dog that um, you've never seen before, and all of these examples happen to be black, when you see a brown dog, you will never think that it belongs in that category. However, maybe it's just, maybe this breed of dog can be either brown or black, and these 10 examples just happen to not have any brown dogs in there. So this is where, this basically sort of ties into fine grain recognition. And finally, where are both teams wrong? So it happens on 30 out of um, 1,500 images. Multiple objects, so an image can have 
many different objects and sometimes more than five. Um, and I think this happened on about 25 out of 1,500 images. And then on five out of 1,500, it's incorrect annotations. So it's basically when our annotation system, the original crowdsourcing annotation system just failed and said that something is in the image when it's really not. All right, so there's more details about this in the paper, as well as a lot more analysis of the results of the localization task and the classification task. And um, yeah, so this is just one part of it. All right, so with that, we're going to move on to talks from teams that participated in the classification and localization task. And um, is there any questions? Any questions?